Okay. Um, dear Mr. and Mrs. Chairman, dear colleagues, uh, first I'd like to thank uh, the organizing committee and ESMO for giving me the honor of presenting you two clinical case presentations on uh, locally advanced and metastatic pancreatic cancer. These uh, both cases and also your responses as to which therapeutic strategy you would follow will later be discussed by Thomas Sufferlein, who is a member of ESMO, uh, of the ESMO guideline working group and is responsible for the guidelines on pancreatic adenocarcinoma published in 2012. So uh, let me start with the first case. The first case I'd like to present you is a 75-year-old Caucasian male patient with a medical history of type 2 diabetes and a transient ischemic attack. Patient presented in September of 2011 with a, a substantial weight loss of 10 kilograms and a painless obstructive jaundice. So I'm showing you some images of his CT scan. And I know it's always difficult to interpret it, this case, these, these kind of cases based on one or two static images. But what we saw is a infiltrative tumoral mass of the head of the pancreas um, with some extra pancreatic extension and possible duodenal wall invasion. As you can see on this image, there is an encasement of the superior mesenteric artery for at least uh, 180 degrees. There's also at least a partial venous uh, portomesenteric confluence encasement, and there are some uh, there are a few local regional lymph nodes. So I think we can all agree this is a quite extensive case of locally advanced pancreatic tumor. However, there are no distant metastases. This patient underwent an endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle aspiration, uh, confirming that this is a pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. The patient's CA 19.9 after resolution of uh, jaundice is at 2,924 units per milliliter. This patient underwent an ERCP with placement of a self-expandable metal stent, leading to resolution of clinical jaundice and normalization of bilirubin. So at this point, I'd like to have your advice with this 75-year-old patient with locally advanced, probably inoperable um, adenocarcinoma. What would be your treatment choice, taking into regard this patient has an excellent performance status? Would you offer him a chemotherapy with a single agent like gemcitabine or S1? Or would you go for a more intensive therapy like combination of gemcitabine with a platinum like cisplatin or oxaliplatin? Or would you go for a therapy with gemcitabine napaclitexel, or even more intensive, a triplet therapy with fulfirinox? Or would you reckon this patient is a good candidate for chemoradiation? Or option number seven, do you have another ID? Maybe better? Right, so most of you would choose single agent gemcitabine, and some would choose uh, the combination with napaclitexel. So, our patient um, in September of 2011 was randomized in the LAP07 trial, and it was randomized to the gemcitabine monotherapy arm at a standard dose. His CT scan at two and four months of treatment showed actually no significant changes. However, his tumor marker, the CA19.9, went down, went down from, from 3,000 to about uh, 37 units per milliliter. However, after four months of therapy, this patient developed a fatigue grade three, a lymphedema grade two, and a weight gain of about seven kilograms. So this patient is now showing disease control under gemcitabine monotherapy. However, he's experiencing, experiencing some relevant side effects, mainly fatigue and uh, peripheral edema. What would you recommend to this patient at this point? Would it be to change therapy to another monotherapy, like a fluoropyrimidine-based therapy? Or would you switch to a combination of a platinum with 5-FU? Or intensify therapy by giving this patient fulfirinox? Or since he, doesn't, he hasn't progressed in four months of chemotherapy, would you think this is a good candidate for chemoradiation? Or in contrast, would you withdraw chemotherapy, starting him on a therapy break? and uh, start a period of close observation. Or option six, six you have another uh, suggestion. 
so chemo radiation seems to be the most popular right so because of side effects this patient was discontinued from the LAPO7 trial and he went on a therapy break and quite, uh, quite surprisingly this therapy break lasted for 11 months from January 2012 up to November 2012 during this period, we saw a resolution of the gemcitabine toxicity. The patient was in excellent clinical condition, and he got a CT scan every two months, showing no evolution. However, there's a gradual increase in uh, his tumor marker CA 19.9, which went up from about 37 up to 14,000. And in November 2012, the patient presented with an acute cholangitis due to a biliary stent dysfunction for which he received uh, antibiotics and another year's ERCP. And a CT scan at this point showed a slight increase in volume of the primary tumor, also an increase in volume of several local regional lymph nodes, and there was a development of a liver metastasis in segment six. So again, our patient is now becoming metastatic after 11 months of therapy break, however and is still performing quite well. What would be your treatment of choice? Would it be to reintroduce gemcitabine? Or would you, since he has become metastatic, intensify your therapy with a combination of gemcitabine with naptaclitaxel, or fulfirinox, or maybe a combination of a platinum with 5 of you, or an oral fluoropyrimidine like S1, or would you reckon this patient has lived long enough and you should offer him best support of care? Or do you have another option? Right. So most of you would choose uh, re to reintroduce gemcitabine. That is what, uh, what happened. In November 2012, the patient was reintroduced uh, with gemcitabine at a slightly reduced dose because of previous side effects. He got uh, 750 milligrams per square meter. With this therapy, subsequent CT scans show the stable disease on the primary tumor and lymph nodes. However, a shrinking and disappearance of the liver metastasis in segment six, and this together with a dramatic decrease in tumor marker from 14,000 to about 1,000. So I'm showing you this case to illustrate that this patient is now reaching a survival of 22 months with just gemcitabine monotherapy at a stop and go strategy. So it, it seems to benefit, still benefit some patients. Second case is a bit similar. It is a 60-year-old Caucasian female woman with no relevant uh, medical history. She uh, was diagnosed in November of 2010 with slight weight loss and a painless obstructive jaundice. And I'm showing you a CT scan. Um, okay, so it seems uh, a bit more clear there. Um, a CT scan after placement of a metal biliary stent. Um, showing a, a tumoral mass in the head of the pancreas uh, with a diameter of, of, of about three centimeters. There is a quite extensive uh, venous encasement of the portomesenteric confluence um, for a length for, for over a two centimeter length. However, there's no abutment or involvement of the arterial vessels, so the celiac axis and the superior mesenteric artery are free. So one could argue this is actually a borderline resectable case. Others would say this is a locally advanced case. In, in any way, there, there are no distant metastases. This patient also underwent endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle aspiration, confirming pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. CA 19.9 after resolution of jaundice was 100 units per milliliter. And after placement of a biliary stent, we got uh, normal values of bilirubin. So in this patient, there is quite a, an extensive venous encasement, but no arterial encasement. The patient is performing well and is 60 years old. Would you consider this patient at this point for a Whipple resection? Or would you start some induction chemotherapy based on a single agent like gemcitabine? Or a combination of gemcitabine with a platinum or with napaclitaxel? or maybe to intensify therapy a triplet like Fulfirinox? Or do you think this is a good case to give this patient a uh, course of chemo radiation? Okay, this is interesting. So quite aggressive. <laughs> okay. 
because our surgeons were reluctant to operate on this patient because of the extensive venous um, encasement. Uh, it, was deemed in, it was deemed inoperable at that time uh, because uh, it would be impossible to achieve an R0 resection. The patient was, uh, was included and randomized in the LAPO7 trial for locally advanced pancreatic cancer. And she was randomized to the combination arm of gemcitabine with erlotinib at a daily dose of uh, 100 milligrams. And her CT scan at two and four months showed no significant changes. However, the tumor marker went down from 100 to uh, 15, so normalization of the CA 19.9. And patient was performing well, just having a, a grade one acne form rash on our lotonip. So stable disease on CT scan and a normalization of CA 19.9 after four months of combination therapy. The patient entered the second randomization phase of the LAP07 trial, randomizing her to chemoradiation. The patient had radiotherapy to a total dose of 54 grays in 1.8 gray fractions, um, supported by capocytabine as a uh, radiosensitizer. After completion of chemoradiation, the patient still uh, displayed stable disease on CT scan. However, there was a slight increase in CA 19.9. So now this patient has had four months of uh, chemotherapy and the course of chemoradiation, still showing the extensive encasement of the venous confluence. Would you now propose this patient with the benefit of the doubt a Whipple resection? Would you reintroduce gemcitabine with or without erlotinib? Or would you try to intensify therapy, trying to, to uh, get this patient operable? with gemcitabine with a platinum or gemcitabine with nap paclitaxel or even more intensive with a triplet like fulfurinox. Okay. That's not really what happened though. So because our uh, surgeons, because our surgeons um, so no, no change on the CT scan. Uh, the patient was uh, continued as per protocol in the LAPO7 trial, and she uh, was placed on maintenance therapy with her lotinib monotherapy at a daily dose of 150 milligrams. Um, up to November of 2011, where she, she was still uh, showing stable disease on CT scan and a normalization again of the CA 19.9. However, in November of 2011, patient suddenly presented with upper GI bleeding with a severe drop in hemoglobin due to a duodenal ulcerative lesion. Several attempts for endoscopic and arteriographic hemostasis were undertaken but were unsuccessful. So in the end, there was no real other option but to operate this patient um, for um, bleeding control. So the patient went, underwent a pancreatic duodenectomy in December of 2011. And quite surprisingly, pathology report showed presence of steatosis and extensive fibrosis, but no residual malignancy. So in fact, a complete pathological response. So to summarize, this patient consequently got four months of chemotherapy with a combination of gemcitabine and allotinib, followed by a course of chemoradiation and then a maintenance of allotinib monotherapy and then an unplanned resection uh, because of uh, GI bleeding. Uh, what from what probably would be a post-radiotherapy post duodenal ulcer. She underwent pancreatic duodenectomy and had a complete pathological response. Nonetheless, in April 2012, the patient developed an efferent loop syndrome based on diffuse peritoneal carcinomatosis with fatal outcome in July of 2012. So I'm presenting you this case to, to show you that some patients might benefit from uh, radiation therapy but uh, uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma stays a micrometastatic disease. I thank you for your attention.